right. We are with Dr. Doug Graham from foodandsport.com. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and checking out this interview. Dr. Graham, I wanted to ask you about your books. You have the most famous one I know about is the 80-10-10 diet, but you also have another one called uh, Grain Damage that seemed pretty interesting to me. What kinds of things are you talking about in there? I could only imagine. Well, in Grain Damage, uh, which came out back in the 90s, I was examining the efficacy of a starch-based diet. I got into a conversation with a a, a guy I knew who was a self-proclaimed fitness expert. He does know a lot about fitness, uh, therefore he figured he also knew a lot about diet. And I said, well, you know, nutrition and diet have been sort of my realm for a long time, especially sports nutrition. And he he wrote an article in a magazine that came out here in Britain um, that was basically making fun of a raw food diet for athletes and it uh, i was incensed (laughs) i wrote a one-page defense of of the darn thing that he had written and then i looked at it and i said you know this this could be strengthened dramatically so i ended up writing 40 pages and i didn't want to write more because i wanted people to read the darn thing right kept it short and sweet but i wrote 40 pages on just the other side i'm not i'm not telling people don't eat starch if they want to eat starch they can but i'd like them to at least understand it's like it's like you don't tell people don't smoke cigarettes you just educate them about the problem and right. then they can make intelligent choices based on having sufficient information so i i just took took a look at the starch based diet and the problems with it from lack of vitamin c to to all the other things that can go wrong with a starch based diet uh, nutritionally, uh, as far as ravaging the environment by running monocultures, uh, over and over, just looking at what goes on in a starch-based diet, the the cancer-causing problems that happen when we heat starches, the acrylamide problem, on and on through the the list, and and then just say, okay, folks, you make up your own mind whether you think that. A tasteless food. I mean, by definition, starch is tasteless. We have to keep in mind yeah. that uh, if you go to the dictionary and look up starch, it says it is a not flavorless, not bland, but tasteless. <laughs> uh, so you build your diet around food that has no taste. Yeah, it's interesting. This grain is uh, its such a problem for people to digest. And even now, it's getting to be more and more popular to have gluten-free stuff. Everybody is celiac. Everybody is celiac. It's just some people more so than others. Uh, But but none of us handle gluten. Yeah, we just weren't meant to eat that, were we? No, it's it's, makes great wallpaper paste. (laughs) You know, it's interesting though too when you think about it. Gluten is, I mean, that's in three meals a day for most people. Yeah, it really is, and you see it. You see it in the pasty complexion. You see it in our vocabulary. You know, if you take if you take starch and water you make paste and if you take starch and water and sugar you make pastry and if you take starch and water and eggs you make pasta and I mean nobody's hiding the fact that it's just paste Uh, to me it's amazing that we mindlessly eat it and I loved it when I was a kid you know flavored starch sugar flavored starch salt flavored starch whatever but (laughs) For me, what I've learned is, is that I have a choice. I can eat foods that I love, that love me back, like f- fruits and vegetables that are really good for me, mm-hmm. or I foods that I love that are just, just going to harm the heck out of me. They don't love me back. Uh, and whether that's you know a chicken salad sandwich or, or uh, uh, roast beef or whatever it is, it's not that those foods taste bad. It's just how much do I love myself? Am I willing to take good, good care of myself by giving myself things that love me back if we if you're in a relationship with food how long would you stay in a relationship with food that hurt you at every meal right right and you know what's interesting what you just said i think what you just said is the crux of just about everything because you can talk about how grains are really addictive you know people and the flavor so good and there's no denying that they're addictive and, the, and they taste great but what you were just saying about how you're going to be in a relationship with food and, and how much do you really love yourself, if you love yourself enough, you'll do what it takes to get over the addiction of these uh, certain foods. 
it seems like our culture just doesn't love themselves. People don't love themselves enough to really care to get over those addictions because that seems to be the real problem, doesn't it? Well, that's, that is a big part of it. But another big part of it is the amount of stress that we're under today. And the thing is, we have to be willing to look back in time a little bit more than most people do. We tend to think that the way it is now is the way it's been. And especially our younger people tend to think, oh, the way it is now is the way it's been. But, but in fact, 100 years ago, the average man or woman got nine hours sleep a night. And 50 years ago, the average man or woman got eight hours sleep a night. Mm-hmm. And today, the average American is getting seven hours sleep per night. And then when you take away those two necessary hours, you stress people out something fierce. They start relying on stimulants in order to get through their day, and it stresses them out even more. At that point, self-loving behavior becomes not the most important thing. Uh, getting through the day somehow becomes more important, and the stress levels just keep rising. So although I wouldn't agree that starch tastes so good because it is tasteless. Uh, what, what does happen is it, it stresses your system in a variety of ways and exposes us to various chemicals that function to make us go numb. Not that we feel good, but that we feel nothing. We stop feeling. And when we think about all of the foods that are considered comfort foods, they they don't actually comfort us. They make us go numb. And starch is certainly high on that list. Yeah, that's an interesting way to put it. I mean, that's kind of similar to alcohol for people where you just kind of check out for a couple hours if you get drunk. And and you don't eat to remember, typically, when you're having a life that you don't want to remember, that you don't even want to be living. And so making the choice to enjoy every moment of life to have to have a fantastic experience regardless of no matter what's going on at the moment to 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 know that things are just getting better and better and better and that life is you know to be ecstatic not just okay <laughs> but ecstatic and thinking wow I'm, I'm fantastic and i'm expecting it to get better you know you, you want that to happen you have to make it happen and you make it happen by taking fantastic care of yourself. You take exceptionally good care of yourself, you get exceptionally good results. It's so interesting how, you know, when you look at diet, it's so much more than just what we're eating. I mean, there's the psychological aspects of it, the physiology of it, and there's so many reasons why people aren't taking care of themselves. And it goes back, it, as you keep unwinding it, it gets into politics, it gets into the reasons why people are working jobs they hate, and the stress of everything, and it really unravels pretty deep, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot of doors open up, and most of them, most of them have 